Hi, this is Matt Reisinger with Reisinger Homes. Welcome to my video blog dedicated to building science and fine craftsmanship. I'm in a new construction house here. We just insulated this, and I thought this would be a good opportunity to tell you about the new International Energy Conservation Code changes that's happening across the country. Uh, we here in Austin, Texas, just adopted the 2012 codes, and so things have changed from the previous 2009 codes, and I wanted to show you how spray foam specifically in this house is meeting or exceeding the codes. So as you can see here, we've got two by six exterior walls. We frame things with advanced framing, so these two by fours are in 24 inch centers. You can see we've done a nice job of lining up our floor trusses above with these. And under the old code, we could actually uh, use just R13 at our walls, which meant we could do a two by four wall. And now with the new code, things have changed a little bit. We actually need an R21 wall if we're not using any rigid foam on the outside. Um, so this wall behind us here meets that. This is five and a half inches of open cell foam, which is gonna be R21. Actually, R19 is the code, pardon me. But here's what I think code, uh, pardon me, that uh, spray foam does that goes well beyond code. Look at that band joist right there. That is a really hard place to insulate with any other product besides spray foam. Uh, that section, if we were gonna try and insulate that with, ins with uh, fiberglass bats or with a bibs type system, is nearly impossible to insulate it well. And with open cell spray foam, it just does a fantastic job. I do wanna point out one tip about spray foam that I wanna pass on to you. We're on slab on grid construction, which you see a lot here in, uh, in the south. And this location here between the slab and the bottom plate is a notorious air leak. Of course, the spray foam does a great job of sealing air leaks or possible air infiltration in this stud bay, but where you've got a wood to slab connection, that's a very leaky spot. We've run a bead of uh, Trimco Dimonic. You could also use NP1, and that's a really good tip uh, to air seal at that location. Let's go upstairs in this house, and I'll show you uh, what the roof line looks like, and let's talk about sealing insulation. All right, so now we're upstairs in the house. One thing I forgot to mention earlier, this video is intended for people or who are in the hot, humid climate zones. We're actually in climate zone two for Austin, Texas. And Texas actually has climate zones three and four incorporated. So you wanna look up for your specific area what climate zone you're in. There'll be a link to a blog post down below where you can find that. Traditional houses that are insulated here in the flat, we're in the upstairs in this house. These are our roof trusses, so the drywall is gonna get hung here. Traditional houses that are insulated on the flat now have to go for, uh, from R30 to R38 in the new code. But of course, I'm a huge believer in conditioned attic space. So you can see we've got our spray foam up at the roof line on this house. We actually have eight inches of spray foam for an R30 uh, roof. To meet code, we actually only needed about seven inches, which makes an R25 inside the house. Check out my other videos for, uh, for rigid rooftop foam on the exterior to really take you well beyond code. But take a look here in this attic. This is why I want that spray foam at the roof line. That rigid metal trunk line right there running across, that is within the conditioned airspace of the house. So here in this upstairs bedroom, if our thermostat is set at 74 and it's 100 degrees outside in July, this, this room is gonna be 74, that attic may be 76 or 77 degrees, and that's it. It'll be maybe a couple degrees hotter, and that's all. So all that ductwork is going through a great air-conditioned space. It makes for huge efficiency differences between this and a traditionally insulated house. Next time you are building or remodeling, I highly recommend open cell spray foam. And if you wanna use the same specs I am for this house, do advanced framing on your walls, do five and a half inches of open cell, and do eight inches in your roof line. See some, other, some of my other videos for advanced framing tips, uh, tips on more air sealing, and also how to do exterior rigid foam both on your walls and your ceiling. Thanks for joining me everybody, we'll see you next time.